Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. For thou, O God, hast proved us, thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the net, thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted, and I will not give my glory unto another? But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker, that the pot should strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou? Or thy work he hath no hands? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, He had no understanding? share something with you. We can all agree that these are times of distress. But there's a blessing in this time of distress and something I want to tell you about. Many times we've read the word of God and he speaks about pottery and potter's clay We hear things like the furnace. I want to add some understanding to that. Throughout our lives, we have attempted to hold on to many things. Many of us have suffered great loss, a removal of many of our beloved. But it's no secret that we have all endured great losses. Here's an answer. In the natural world, many things are broken by other natural things. Take a limb, for example. A strong limb of an oak tree is not easily broken by something smaller than it is. But a powerful wind can break the branch of an oak tree like a twig. It could even break the tree in some cases. Which is to say, all natural things, all natural bonds can be broken by other natural things. Us too, in a like manner, we are also broken of natural things. That's why we have broken lives. Now it's time for us to understand why. Our Father in His wisdom has told us 
a truth that we seldom take in and evades us to a large degree. Because all natural things can be broken by other natural things. There's a process in our lives. And this is the blessing in a time of distress. The distress that we endure is a very different storm. It's a storm of heat, a storm of flame. But why? You have to consider potter's clay. And here it is. A potter will make a beautiful bowl, a vase, whatever he makes. If he makes it, but it's not put in a kiln, it's still beautiful, beautifully crafted, but it can be easily broken and dismantled by natural forces. So what does that potter do? He puts it into a kiln of great heat, great heat. The process in the kiln transmutes the material inside. It's still the same shape as the potter developed, but now it's being fortified. You see that great heat inside the kiln can reach some very hot temperatures that are not natural. You can't find them in nature. Not nature in the living. As it endures its process, impurities are burnt off. They pop. The item begins to glaze slowly but surely. It's hardened. In fact, it's hardened to the degree that now it's no longer fragile. Is it? It's fortified. You see, if he didn't put it in the kiln, any natural force could break it apart. Because it was put in the kiln. And when it comes out of the kiln, there are no natural forces that can take it apart. That's what's happening in our lives during this time of distress. You began as one thing, but you're being fortified that you don't break by any natural thing again. In the beginning, you had people in your life that you did love, friendships that were bonded and lost. All these things happen by natural forces, natural things, things you are exposed to every day of your life. But you're in the kiln now. And in that kiln, you're being fortified. And here's the end result. When you come out, if there be one bonded to you, there is no natural force that can break it. There's no loss. When it comes out, it's fortified against the elements against those natural forces that could have broken it before it went into the kiln. Now you're worthy to be filled. You're a vessel of usage. You can hold things and you won't break my natural forces. That's called worthiness. You see, you didn't make yourself worthy. The fire did. The unnatural fire that fortifies you made you worthy to hold the contents of what you hold. All these things in your life, you've seen what happens to clay. If it attempts to be a vessel without being fortified. So now you're being fortified. Now no potter will fortify anything until it's complete. In other words, it must be pleasing before it goes into the kiln. So then it pleased the Lord. And he created you. And you have been found worthy to be put into the kiln. That you may hold the contents that he will pour into you. Which means when you come out, there are no losses. There are no weak points. You are in fact resigned. As he designed you and you can carry what he fills you with. 
is the process of distress. Distress is nothing more than the kiln. It's your fortification. During this distress, many things do surface. Just as pottery is in the kiln, impurities, they pop. You can see them when they pop, but they're only impurities. And they burn up in that hot flame. And the only thing that's left after the process is what the potter designed, nothing else. So now, all this distress that you may be enduring is nothing more than a kiln, a necessary kiln for the completion of you. Remember, no one's going to labor to increase a fire in a kiln as they have a vessel that they found worthy to put in the kiln. You've been carefully molded, carefully handled. You've not been lost. You've been molded. And with the molding of what you are, you're in the kiln. And you will come out what the potter created you to be. The pottery does not know the process. If the pottery had a mind, it would cry bitterly. It would never know the beauty its creator saw in it. But the only reason you go through such things is because of the kiln. The proof that you fashioned in the first place means you are the apple of the creator's eye. Your fortification will be complete. And there is the mystery of the Lord being the author and finisher of your faith. Because it is your faith being fortified. No process would take place in your life. Unless the Lord did not, if he loves what he created and what he created is you. You're being fortified. As these times of distress engulf the world. Remember, it's only a kiln. And when the distress gets very high, that's when you come out of the kiln. What will remain? All the impurities that popped off, of course they must be destroyed. When you look out into the world, that's what you see. What has come out of the pottery? You see the leftovers. Never forget this process. Understand it. You'd never be put in the kiln if the Lord didn't adore you. He wouldn't. Never. Which means you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your life endures because of that reason. Just like that piece of pottery placed into a kiln. You see the potter, the beauty is in the eye of that creator. He knows what he designed. The pottery does not know what it is. He loves what he designed, so he took the time to increase the fire. And if he increased the fire, you're found worthy to be refined. And you're only refined that you may be kept. And you're kept because he does love you. You'd never go through that fire if you were in fact worthless. So all these bonds in the natural world that have been broken, that was before you were placed into the kiln. You are made to hold the contents of what he will pour in you. You're designed per his specifications.
That's all I wanted to tell you so you can remember. I hope you meditate on that. Because that is our Father's process. The trouble we see is really not in fact trouble. It's only refining. A simple refinement process. Anything that's not placed into the kiln, what happens to it? Because it's not fortified. It'll eventually dry out, crumble apart, and be nothing. It'll go back into the earth as it was. Anything that is fortified is for long-term use. It is a prized vessel to the potter who puts something in a kiln. After you're done, the natural forces that could have destroyed you will not. And you'll be ready to contain what the Lord has poured in you. And that is the process, a small process, to understand. If you can understand that, you'll have no offenses. If you can embrace it, you search the scriptures and you'll see it. That is you. So in fact, we're not losing things right now. Things are being fortified. You only start the kiln when you've already determined what that vessel will be. So in fact, you are predestined. The heat is turned up for strength. You see the creator in an artist's mind they already see the end result God sees the beauty of you in the end he does not see the impurities in the beginning when you're making something you only do so because you see what you want it to be as it comes out and you begin to put things together to accomplish the vision so God does the same thing with you. You're experiencing the process and you're being fortified. Understand it. It's no one's fault. It is the process of God's beloved. And that process will be completed. On the last note, we know this one thing for sure. No one takes the time to start a kiln for no reason. Neither have all these situations in your life been placed upon you for no reason. All have been purposed. All are part of the kiln. It is not known what you will be, only that you will be like them. The end result of you is even beyond your own imagination. So as you experience the kiln, always remember, that's your father's fire. That is your father's fire. Because what he sees in you is why he formed the clay in the first place. And you're almost done now. Remember that when you see things in the world. Remember the Lord's processes. Search out the Lord's processes so that you can see without question what is actually happening. If a cup needs a handle, the only way that cup will keep the handle is if the cup and the handle are forged in that kiln. They have to be heated and the materials condensed so much that it's a solid joint. The Lord will not suffer the handle of a cup to be lost because it is part of the cup. All this happens in the fire. The beauty of pottery 
and the miracle of pottery takes place in the kiln. And the end result is astounding. The end result is impossible. Shiny and glazed. And they're left to cool. Hmm. That's our process. But unlike the clay of the world, you're a totally different type of clay. And what comes out on the other end, metal, can have no strength against with that type of fire and the end result, there is no natural thing that can destroy you ever again. You were quickly formed and placed in the kiln early in your life. If you had not been in the kiln, you would have been destroyed. And kilns get very hot. And it takes a while for that process to be finished. I hope you all understand that process. Because when you were created in this earth, you were but clay. And if you don't want to lose what you just designed, you must get it in the fire quickly. Quickly. That's what happened to you in your life. There are no natural elements that can put out the fire of God's kiln. Just so you know that. Remember that. That's why it's written so many times, joy and tribulation. You've been purposed all along. You just didn't know how. Finish the process. You're in the kiln. You have no choice. Can a pot release itself? No, it cannot. You are saved. You will be taken out and display it. You will hold the contents on which the Lord will pour. That is letting patience have her perfect work. That you may be complete, entire, wanting for nothing. Hope you can see that. And all glory goes to the Father. Because his ways are so much higher than our ways. And some things we just don't know until we seek him in truth for that. The kiln does not destroy. It fortifies and completes. You're rough going in, very smooth and glazed coming out. Refined. About the potter and his clay, knowing that he saw you before he formed the clay. Because what artist, an artist knows what they desire to create. Like one who builds a house, they already have the plan. Doesn't look like a house when they're digging in the ground and doing many things, but the end result can be beautiful. And it takes patience to see that entire process. And many things look meaningless, but they're not. There are certain tasks that look hopeless. It looks like it's not going to work. And it never looks like it's going to be beautiful when you dig up the ground. But the end result can be astounding. God knows you on the other side. And he's taking you to that point where he held you up and said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You're just going through the process so that you understand him. Because in the end, you're going to know it took great care to mold you and to put you in the kiln and to watch you and to bring you out and to set you to cool. 
your purpose is revealed as he pours into you the contents of which he made you for. And he has many different vessels. No two are alike, which mean the contents, though they are from the same source, they differ in various degrees. Some of you, the thicker the clay, the longer you have to stay in the kiln. It's never for your destruction. And in truth, distress is absolute deliverance and completeness within itself. Meditate on that. Meditate and walk in liberty. Be mindful of those things Christ said. Let his mind set abound in you. And be free. You're in good hands, you always have been. Always. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. ever.